This story begins when there was a holiday. The guy put his arm around the girl and told her to ignore it. The man looked at her carefully and told her to trust him, and she could look only at him the whole time. And then suddenly the man who was conducting the ceremony said that the evaluation procedure was completed, and according to the results of the evaluation, Riella Blinite, she has attained the level of a high-class savior, and confirms the title of an Anto descendant. Suddenly there was shouting from the crowd. The people began to shout out prices, how much they were going to take this girl for, because that way the deity would not leave them. A man offered 20,000 shillings. He wanted the girl to be exchanged for royal currency. Someone said it was God's grace of the temple that took pity on them. But at that moment, another man ran out to them and shouted for everyone to pay attention to him and shut up. Had they forgotten about the Continental Confederacy Agreement? He started showing a piece of paper and said that the saint, especially the high-class savior, is a Federation-run facility. And being members of the Federation, they all have common ownership. So there's no point in fighting over this girl. He then turned to his majesty holding out his hand, and said to him to grant the lady to them, and also that he might not worry, for according to the agreement, they would care for and cherish Lady Riella. But the man didn't even have time to finish the last sentence before His Highness struck him with his sword, and a lot of blood spurted out of the man. His Highness said it was a lot of fun after all. He added that it meant that a once-defeated criminal gang had introduced itself as the Federation, now treats the Emperor's wife like a thing and thinks she can just be bought. Then he raised his sword higher and asked, Will there be any other joke he will say? At that moment, the man who was leading the ceremony turned to his highness and told him to calm down. This is the main temple, and the saints are the messengers of the Lord. So he should calm his fervor immediately. But his highness asked, And what's in it for him? Is there anything on this earth that doesn't belong to him? But afterwards he apologized for his behavior in the main temple. He just thought it was a den of thieves. He just can't even stand it when strangers infringe on his treasure. Afterwards, he went up on stage and said that this was his official statement. Let them know that he is Herrhan Linhart von Vilsbach, owned by a woman named Riel Blinite. This statement, this is his warning to those who are too greedy. Therefore, if anyone does dare to fall prey to his greed, let him be prepared for war against it. After that, he started to approach the girl and told her not to worry and to just stay near him. Riella must not let the filthy blood touch her feet. And at that moment, the girl climbed into his arms. It was a touch that made the girl slightly dizzy, but it reminded her of the first time she had hugged Herkin. These events were several years ago, when the girl was still living in tents in the woods. Riella produced one very interesting thing and asked her uncle if it was better or so, and how he liked it in general. The man was not very pleased. Such a request he didn't understand. Why she was so worried about a couple of pieces of cloth. The girl kept bothering him, and then Uncle Carl couldn't take it anymore. He shouted at the girl that he didn't know, and then he started to leave, saying that he had had enough. When Carl came out, Hank came into the tent and told the girl that he thought he was going to get mad and hit her. Riella said hello to the second uncle and said he looked very nervous. Then Hank looked at the girl and asked what it was she was doing, what she was going to do to please the customer. But Riella was surprised and asked, Who is this trying to please the client? She wants Fabian to like her. The girl loved that scenery of the forest which had become so familiar to her by now, and the smell of the earth, as well as little sparks shooting out from a small fire that was set up next to the tents. After Hank had picked Riella up as a child, she hadn't liked places like this, since she'd been an errand boy. But there was still something that made her lightheaded. And now the day has come, and the girl thinks this will be the last time. She began to imagine a man saying he would make her happy. Fabian had promised her several years ago that when he saved up money and got out of the village, she would be his bride, and now the day of the promise had come after all. Suddenly a voice from one of the residents was heard, saying that the client's carriage was pulling up. Then Hank turned to the girl and said they had arrived, so let him step into his place. Riella was very happy because it was Fabian who had finally arrived. Then Hank approached the other workers and told them not to be frivolous. He told them to keep their cool and keep their composure in any situation. The girl wondered how important this client was. If it was that serious, they must have been paid a lot of money. Riel couldn't believe that Fabian had done such great things. After a while, the doors of the wagon opened, and a handsome man stepped out. The girl immediately recognized him as Fabian, but that wasn't all. Following the man, a beautiful girl got out of the wagon. When they came out, they thanked him for such a warm welcome. Riella just stood there and watched them. She was shocked. 
Then Hank approached the young people. The girl said she was glad to meet him and thanked him for his efforts. But the man asked what other endeavors there were, what kind of suffering the princess had gone through to get to them. When the princess shifted her gaze to the girl behind Hank and said she must be Riella, the girl certainly didn't expect that her client would be a princess, as if she had stepped out of the pages of a fairy tale. Then she bowed and said hello. The guest said that her name was Princess Greta. Then she added that Fabian had told a lot about her, and the girl was very happy to meet her. Afterwards she said that she and he were close, and Fabian's friends were her friends too. So don't let her do the formalities. Afterwards she said they would see each other in the evening. Riel couldn't believe that the princess and Fabian were so close. After their meeting, the girl went straight back to her tent. She was shocked that she had met the princess herself, and that they could be compared. Suddenly the girl had a thought. What if Fabian was comparing her to a princess too? But at that moment, the girl heard the curtains to her tent being pulled back. Riel turned around and saw Fabian. She walked over, hugged him, and asked why he had suddenly returned. She thought he had gone with the princess. The boy smilingly replied that he had just forgotten something. Riel snuggled even closer to him and asked if that was too much. The man didn't understand what she was talking about, but the girl explained that she would receive an order from the royal family and why he hadn't told her anything about it at all. Fabian laughed and apologized because of it. Afterwards he gave her a rose, saying it would be as an apology, after which he asked her if she liked it. Riella was shocked to see it. She asked, Is it really Vivian's rose? How did he find it? At that moment, the man kissed her on the cheek and said that he had promised her. So he turned all the flower shops in the village upside down for her. Riella sniffed the flower and said with an embarrassed expression that he was exaggerating a bit, and thought to herself that even so, it was good that he was still so concerned about the princess. Well then he said he had to go. After all, there would be dinner soon. Riel smiled and thought that of course Fabian was her dearest lover. And now it was dusk, as all the people of this little village sat down at the table and began to eat their dinner. Princess asked if they had already decided on their future plans. Hank replied that they were still thinking about it, the first time they'd ever been paid so much for a job. But at that moment, two young guys came up to him and said that as they say, who spent the money knows, as the other said that jokes are jokes but he is sure that he will beat this mercenary. At the end they shouted that it was all for the princess. Then Greta asked how about taking this opportunity to move everyone to the capital. If they wanted to, she could even give them a place in the military guard. Everyone was immediately surprised and asked if it was true. The princess replied that of course they were trying so hard to help the royal family. As Riel watched, she thought, Is Fabian still not going to tell me that they're getting married? The princess asked, What do you think of that, Riella? Am I not pleased with your proposal? The girl replied that not at all. It was very nice of her. It would be nice in the capital, but she actually had some more plans. Immediately she asked, And what are your plans? But the girl didn't know what to say, because her co-workers didn't know about her and Fabian's plans yet. But at that moment Fabian coughed at her, showing her to keep quiet. The girl was surprised. She hadn't thought they would have to keep it all further secret. Riella didn't say anything back to the girl. Then the princess apologized and said that she didn't mean to inconvenience her, and said that she should consider another repayment then. The girl said not at all. That would be overdoing it. But the princess said she was grateful for a lot of things, so she wanted to make it up to her. Riella became even more embarrassed. She said that she was saying such a thing, for the one hadn't done anything yet. Then the princess began to get up from the table. She then began to leave with Fabian, wishing everyone else a pleasant appetite. When it was late at night, everyone was exhausted and wanted to sleep because they had drunk a lot of alcohol. Riella sat at the table and didn't understand why Fabian and the princess weren't coming back. They had been gone for a long time, but then the girl began to reassure herself, saying that they would be back soon. After that, she wondered what the princess was so grateful for. And why are they on such good terms? Then Riella thought there was something more between them than just a strong friendship. Then the girl got up from the table and decided firmly to herself that she must find them. When she walked down the street it was very strange because the carriage was still there. And then there's a shopping street. Suddenly she stepped on a flower, and when she stepped back, she saw that it was Vivian's rose. Riel didn't understand what she was doing outside, on the ground. But then she remembered Fabian. 
she heard some strange sounds behind the foliage. When I got closer, I saw Fabian along with the princess standing very close as if they were going to kiss. Seeing this, Riella was shocked. Her heart was shattered. But then suddenly Fabian seemed to hear someone's presence, turned around and saw the girl. He wanted to run up to her, but the princess stopped him and hugged him. After that, she looked at Riella and said that since that was the case, she would be there alone. After that, the princess left. When the girl and Fabian were alone, the guy wanted to tell her something already, calling her name. The girl had a memory from her childhood. She remembered the first time she met him. The guy had liked her name, and Riel had liked his name a lot. It had been at six years old, a little love that had started because of a name. Fabian looked at the girl carefully and said that she was more precious to him than anything else in the world, and asked, She knows that, doesn't she? The princess said she loved him and he reciprocated, and now they're going to the palace together. Riella got angry. She told him not to joke around like that. Would he really go to the palace with that princess? Tears came to the girl's eyes. She asked, What about her? What about their plans? Riella ran up to him and said that he had told her that when this was over, they would be together forever. He promised her that. When the girl wanted to say something else, they heard someone else's voices. It was Uncle Heng who asked, What's going on with them? Riella was very surprised. She told Uncle Hank that Fabian was marrying the princess and was going to the palace. After which she asked, What should she do now? The man hesitated and asked, Couldn't she just let him go in that case? What would her tears change? Riella conceives that the family said they would build a good relationship and succeed. Though she can't support him, she doesn't understand why she's crying. Then she turned to Hank and asked, does he mean to say that she is the one who is doing wrong? Uncle hesitated and asked, Who then? Is it really Fabian? The princess liked him, and the girl behaves arrogantly, blocking their love. Afterward, Hank asked, Don't they have a child together in their marriage or a livelihood too? That's the relationship between a man and a woman. They get together. They split up. Things happen in life. Then the girl hesitated and asked, He already knew all that, didn't he? Then she thought about it and realized that, so they suddenly stopped teasing Fabian as usual, and as soon as she came over, they would immediately change the topic of conversation. The grape that was given by the princess was just payment for Fabian making her happy. Now it was clear to the girl why she was talking about reparations. It made her cry even more. Riella couldn't take it anymore. And when she wanted to go, Fabian ran up to her, told her not to go, just to listen to him, and asked what he would do if she left. The girl looked him straight in the eye. Tears were streaming down her cheeks, and in a serious voice she said that he had actually left her, and asked why then, he looked like he was the one who'd been abandoned. After that she yanked her arm, and started to walk away. At that moment Uncle Hank shouted and asked where she was going. She had nowhere else to go. Tell her to come back immediately. At this moment, a blonde-haired guy was sitting near the lake. Despite the water, he was thinking about the fact that he was ordered not to drink alcohol and not to go on missions. He was very amused to see such strange behavior of the king. The boy had a flask of alcohol in his hands. As he suddenly looked in front of him, he saw some girl standing across from him and thought he was also amused to watch her. It was Riella. She didn't notice the stranger who sat behind her. The girl was crying and immersed in her thoughts. Then he heard a great splash. The boy rose to his feet and wondered. Had she really jumped into the water? Suddenly people appeared and shouted that a man had fallen into the water. We must help him quickly. The guy looked at the spot where the girl had just been and thought about the fact that she had been crying. It was none of his business, and he shouldn't have interfered. However, no one really wants to die so much that they would cut their life short on their own in tears. This is something he knows all too well. So the man jumped after the stranger and, touching her body, began to pull her out of the water thinking that he alone had enough of seeing them submit to this miserable life, so the girl must survive. At that moment they emerged from the lake. He put the girl on the ground and said that she was still breathing. Afterward, asked the people who had surrounded if anyone had some sort of blanket, because she needed to be warmed up right away. But all the people just watched these actions worriedly. They stood there and were silent. Then the man looked disdainfully at them and asked, Does anyone know how to speak, or is everyone's ears plugged? Someone dared to say that they were seeing her for the first time. And at that moment, a voice came from the crowd. A man said that this girl was his younger sister. 
After that he came over and said that they were so excited when she went missing. Then he thanked the blonde guy for finding her. But at that moment, the guy heard a voice that came out of nowhere. The man wondered if he should sell her to a brothel or be the first to try her body. The man who thought of all this did not understand where such prey came from in their midst. Hearing all this, the guy with white hair said that he changed his mind. So let the guy let her go. The man was surprised and asked what was wrong. He had already thanked him. Let him go on his way. But the boy said he knew he had nothing to do with the girl. The man was frightened and asked if he had not heard him. He had said that he was the girl's older brother. But the man immediately interrupted him and asked him what her name was. Then he got worried and asked if he thought he didn't know her. Maria, her name is Marie. Then the guy said that it was strange, because before this girl fainted, she called herself Rose. The man got nervous and said her name was Rose and Marie was just a nickname. But the man went on and said that it sounded like Lottie, but he thought it was Rasa. The guy who was still holding the girl in his arms said that Lotki was her middle name. But then he empathized and asked the one laughing at him. The people behind him began to wonder if he was definitely her brother. He really doesn't even seem to know her name. And others have asked about the cases. He's not a kidnapper of the reward for catching the likes of her. She's been really good lately. Then the blonde-haired guy came closer to him and asked him if he had heard. It seemed that he, not the girl, had been a good prey, and asked if he might turn him into them with his giblets as fodder for the dogs. The guy was very angry about being exposed. He gave the girl away and left. The blonde-haired man laid her down on the floor and thought that if Asya he knew about this, he would go crazy. After a while, a blonde-haired man came to some establishment. He put down a bag of money and told the man to prepare spare clothes and not to let any other guests into that room. He was angry at first and asked why he was being bossed around. And when he opened the sack and saw how much money was in it, he asked what kind of clothes he should prepare. The man closes the door to the room behind him, told him to get his clothes ready as usual, and just left the door. The employee replied that it would be done and stayed there counting his money with a happy face. And the blonde-haired guy didn't carry the girl into the room and wonder why she was acting so impulsively. After that, he laid her on the bed and thought that Asian wouldn't leave him alone if he found out she was in a hotel with some stranger. He looked at the girl who lay peacefully on the bed and thought that the most powerful men in the world would fight for possession of her. But he still didn't understand what she was jumping into that water for. Then he decided it was his business, so it didn't matter. But at that moment, the girl held out her hand stopping the man, and told him to stay. The guy turned and looked at the stranger, asking if she was already awake. After that he said that she should not strain herself, so let her lie down. But Riella pulled his hand closer to hers and told him not to leave her, and left her feeling very afraid to be alone. But at that moment the man felt a sharp pain in his head, and after that the girl kept telling him not to leave and called him Fabian. And at that moment, some even images appeared before him. Someone was telling the man that this year, there was no need to worry about supplies. After that, the picture changes. And the same man he first saw is walking down the street with a girl and says it must be starting to rain. The blonde-haired man didn't understand what was happening. As bad as his headache was, he'd never had such vivid visions before. Then he turned to the girl who was lying exhaustedly on the bed and asked who she was. Could she be a witch? Riella didn't say anything. She just looked at him with a blank stare. The guy told her to answer faster, and then felt her go very cold. After that he calmed down and put the girl back on the bed and covered her with a warm blanket to keep her warm. Then he sat down next to her in the chair and thought, and since when had he gotten so soft? The man definitely didn't feel threatened, so he acted calm, but he didn't realize who she was. And just like that, the night, which was full of different events, passed, and the girl felt a warm fragrance. When morning came, Riel didn't realize who it was, but she thought it might be Fabian. She felt so warm and cozy, but suddenly she thought that she had fallen into the water and did not understand why she was so warm. So she sat down on the bed and thought, had she gone to heaven? But afterward, she looked beside her and saw the man she was holding by the hand sleeping next to her. She quickly removed her hand and wondered what it was all about. Giving in to her feelings of sadness and betrayal this evening, she had acted foolishly. But she was saved from that treacherous choice by this guy now sitting next to her. Riella thought she had jumped in and dragged him along with her. After thinking it over, the girl got out of bed and was about to leave the room. Suddenly she stopped and thought that this was just some kind of nightmare. 
She should leave quickly before he woke up. So she opened the door. After that, she turned around, looking at the stranger. The girl didn't know whether to thank him or apologize or just blame him for bringing her back to this horrible life. In fact, the only thing Riel wanted to do was just run away and leave no trace behind. And so a great deal of time has passed since then. Somewhere in the forested wilderness of the young expanse of the kingdom of Leota, in a bar called Fernie's, Riel was approached by a man and told to let her pay for their drinks. When the girl replied that Sir Bill had already paid, were they really so drunk that they didn't remember it? Beale himself was outraged and said it was saying such a thing. He hadn't paid anything, so let him carry the bill. Riella replied that no, or else they would come tomorrow, and it would be the same thing for the umpteenth time. A hard fall and winter had passed, and now spring had finally arrived. Next town, the scars that seemed like they would never heal began to hurt less. To tell the truth, Riella was unsure if it was good or bad. The important thing was that this was the village she had managed to escape to. At that moment people came into their bar. The girl was scared at first, but then she told them, Welcome. They were knights. Gaining her wits, the girl asked, What brought them to them this far? They had a coat of arms painted on their shoulders. At that moment, one of the knights thought that here she was, the one Riel Blinite. Then he told the girl that she was arrested according to international laws. Riella didn't understand what was going on. She asked what it meant. The knight said that until she was handed over to the Empire, she would be under the royal knight of the Liotta Kingdom. At this point the hostess of the establishment stood up for the girl and asked, What arrest? What are they taking Riel away for? Do they even know? The knight said she is accused of planning to assassinate his honor the emperor of the Elschweig Empire. Then he asked the girl if she also wanted to be taken away as an accomplice. Riella was shocked. She didn't understand what kind of murder planning this was. And at that moment she suddenly saw Fabian's face. She didn't know what it was about. Riella immediately thought of Uncle Hank and Uncle Carly. She didn't know what to do. And in that moment, she remembered running away from her family, and how Hank had yelled at her that she had nowhere to go. She'd be back soon. Riella couldn't believe that she would have to go back to that day again. If so, she could be protected, and she wouldn't be in this much trouble. As she was led out of the bar, the girl thought about the fact that this nightmare was over and long behind her, but it was only going on, and the worst was ahead of her. After a while, Riel was brought to the prison and thrown into a cell. It was insanely cold. The girl's hands were tied. When the knights brought her in, they said it was nothing she would tolerate. It would get easier with time. The girl was surprised and thought, how can she be relieved? Perhaps Fabian has already gone in search of her. At that moment she pictured his happy face, and the way he says he will save her soon. She didn't have to worry, everything would be fine. But soon, when she was already faint in the cold and darkness of confinement, many perjured themselves against her, hoping to be rewarded. And just like that, the miracle didn't happen, and Riella was soon left with nothing but empty regret. Meanwhile, there was a celebration on the loose and someone announced that His Majesty the Emperor of the Elschweig Empire had arrived. The king and his daughter stood by in anticipation of such a respectful guest. The girl told her father not to worry. They had nothing to lose. The man was interrupted from his thoughts and said that everything was right. He thought that on this day, everything would go according to plan. Nothing would be changed. Then suddenly the butler said for people to welcome the continent's new son, the young Emperor Elschweig. When the fair-haired man rode up to the duke and his daughter, he got off his horse. The king said that they greeted the emperor heartily. The man saluted him for agreeing to meet. The king said he must have been so lonely and hard to get to them. The boy agreed and said that was right. His ears were starting to hurt. He asked all the guests to be silent, for they immediately began to whisper. Then the girl spoke. She addressed his highness and asked if he'd like to take a walk around the palace. After that. A welcome celebration will be held in his honor. But the man said firmly that first, he would want to make sure that the transfer of the kingdom to his control would go well. The king realized what the matter was about and asked, Does he really want to settle matters with that sinner now? The boy said of course he did. Then the girl bowed and said that everything would be done as he ordered. Then the father turned to Greta and asked if she was confident, for the scaffold was far enough from their home. And besides, Surely the emperor would draw his sword. But the girl smiled and said it would all be even better. She said there were too many people watching. So in the eyes of the people, 
The strength of the law will only look stronger and stronger after this. She turned to her father and told him to let him come to his senses, for the sooner they got rid of her the better. At that moment, the girl was brought out to them, and the king said, let it be the emperor's decision. He pointed his finger at the girl and said that she was a sinner who had trespassed on the blood of the noble family of Wilsbach. She was now in his power. Greta said lastly that he could do whatever he wanted to her. He must. Then the emperor came closer to the girl, who was sitting on the floor. At that moment he drew his sword. Greta immediately rejoiced and thought that this would finally happen. Yes. And Riella herself was glad that this nightmare would finally be over, and she would no longer be tormented. But at that moment, the man turned to the girl and told her to raise her head. But the girl did not obey him. She continued to sit and do nothing. Then he repeated in a rougher voice that she should raise her head. At that moment, the whispering of people was heard. They were shocked and didn't understand how the girl dared not listen to him. It was not for nothing that she had been captured after all. The man with the blade was an emperor who suddenly disappeared. He came back ten years later. His name is Herkin Leinhard von Vilsbach. Many said that he had entered the throne of the Elschwalk Empire quite peacefully, but few actually knew how much blood had been spilled for the sake of that peace. The sinner, who stood before the operator as if a victim, was soon to be colored scarlet as well. Hirhan told the girl to raise her head and look at him normally. Riella for once listened to his orders. The man scrutinized her and said she was insanely thin. Then he turned to the king and said that she might be a prisoner but not so much that she should be starved. The people were shocked. They did not understand that the man who had driven his opponent in the struggle for the throne to a distant land would show the slightest sympathy for a sinner. Those present did not understand what was going on. On the one hand, he was offended by the impudence of the sinner, and on the other, he was defending her. Then Greta turned to her assistant in a whisper and said that things were getting heated, so have him deal with him as soon as possible. Then the man immediately obeyed her, turned to his majesty, and said he would read out the report of the crime. Then he took out some papers and started reading about the plot to assassinate his majesty, organized last fall in the eastern region of the empire. Riella Blinite was accused as the head of the conspiracy, but Hirhan wasn't going to listen to any more of this. He raised his sword and cut the man's papers in half. The man was shocked. He even feared for his life. But then the emperor said that he had forgiven the sinner, and asked if it might be better to call it Riel Blinite. The guy got worried and said he'd make the change. Greta watches all this and thought, What is this emperor doing? She's a sinner. To kill her, that's all. The girl didn't like it very much. But at that moment, Riella was completely without strength and lost consciousness, falling to the floor. Everyone immediately slept in shock and started asking why she had fallen. Others asked, What if there's any point in bringing her up at all? She's a prisoner. Greta started watching the emperors carefully at this moment and thought, would he really not kill her? If he really did realize something, it was too bad. The girl wondered what choice he had then. However, the feeling of anxiety is not always wrong. And at that moment, something happened that no one could have predicted. Not even Hirhan. He walked over to the prisoner and took her in his arms. Then the emperor said, that the health of the prisoners who were to be brought to him in the empire had clearly deteriorated. Next. The speech was already read by one of the knights. He said that on this occasion they expressed deep remorse in the face of his majesty for not respecting international rights and causing a breakdown in the investigation. Then he stopped reading, got angry and asked, Did the emperor pretend to be angry but only deceived them? They understand everything, but one must know the measure. The guy who was indignant was named Asian. He asked why his majesty hadn't warned him in advance and this after he had decided to use the carrot strategy rather than the stick. Before he became a captain of the Royal Guard, he had been a close friend of his, willing to give his life for him. Hirhan wanted to say something to him, but Asian continued and said that for sure he wanted all his hair to fall out because of the stress. But the Emperor couldn't take it anymore. He said in an angry voice that if he said one more word, he would pull them out himself. And besides, this situation was not theirs to deal with, but the royal families. Asian replied that if he wanted to hurt them that way, he had succeeded. They're all going crazy out there. But the emperor ignored this remark and asked, What about that girl there? His assistant didn't really know who he was talking about at first. But then he guessed and said that she had been transferred to the hospital and was being rehabilitated. But she was still unconscious. 
He had also heard that she had starved for about ten days after her imprisonment in the dungeon. At this point, Hirhan took the papers and began to scrutinize them. Asian was surprised that he had looked through all the papers. But even so, there were too many. What did you tell the royal police about Riel Blint? As the only suspect? To put it mildly, they were just perfect. All the details were padded one by one and fit together, and there was a lot of evidence. However, these facts of surveillance of Harkin, the crown prince, led by Riella and her orb by brigands proved to be extremely far from the truth. No physical evidence was found at the time, and His Majesty, who wandered about the country and was seriously ill, was unable to fight back against them. Having successfully returned to his native country, he put off investigating the attempt on his life until later. But after things quieted down, he tried to negotiate with the Liotta Kingdom and turn it into a mutually beneficial cooperation. However, he had no idea that they would blame everything on the girl. Asian then asked, Why not play along with them? It was true that she belonged to a mercenary group, after all. Herhan told him not to speak unless he knew the whole truth. The boy was very surprised and asked what he meant. He thought, How could one say such a thing at all? But to a man who had his hands full, checking everything. Then he said that he was the head of the investigation team, and to whom, if they told him such things. But when the emperor answered nothing, the boy asked what was the matter with him. Harkin said he was right. No one but he can talk like that anymore. Asian said that now he realized how valuable a subordinate he was. But the emperor said there was a new assignment. Let him go to the chamber where Riella was now. But the boy said he hadn't even unpacked his luggage from the last trip yet. Herhan replied that he would let him stay at the hospital and sleep there and eat there. Asian wanted to say something to him, but the emperor interrupted him and asked if he was done. Then he could go already. After a while, Greta approached, but she wasn't allowed in. The girl got angry and asked what else it meant. The guard said that one of the emperor's messengers was lying in a hospital bed. The girl asked, What does that mean? The man replied that he certainly didn't seem to be trying to kill her. Greta got angry and asked what the hell he was talking about. She moved closer to him and told him that if he talked like that, everyone around him would think she was the one who had set up the assassination attempt. The guard got worried and said that this was the way to get rid of the suspect, but the girl immediately interrupted him and told him to stop and leave. The man, of course, obeyed her. Greta stood there wondering what was going on at all. Why would the Emperor's aide protect this girl? Greta couldn't believe that he had found out that she was the one who had ordered the knights to kill her. But then she decided it couldn't be true. They'd agreed on the witnesses, and the reports could be scrutinized. Then suddenly she remembered moments from the past, when she'd been close to Fabian, as he told her to tell the girl to be more careful, for she didn't want to hurt such beautiful hands. Greta thought that even if he was there, she didn't know, still, what she should do. She decided that she would do it before she woke up, whatever it took. After a while, Asian and the others in the girl's room sat talking. The boy said, in order, telling you that she was unlikely to say anything anytime soon. The doctor replied that, strictly speaking, they were on the side of the accused. So it was natural for them to be afraid and silent if they took a little more time and tried to convince her. But Asian immediately interrupted him and said that wouldn't work, and told Carnell that they just hadn't seen her. It's been three days since the girl came to her senses and the guy believes she'll answer them soon. So many topics to discuss. Hirhan said that it was all very strange that she was still not speaking. His assistant agreed, and said that usually silence just brings the day of the execution closer. Carnell studied the papers and said he couldn't believe that after she saw him she still hadn't said a word. Asian agreed with him and said that indeed. How could she keep silent after the fact? Then he realized what he had said and asked what he meant by that. The guy asked, Did he really think she said that right off the bat? The man replied that, well, give or take exactly that. Asian turned to his majesty and said that he didn't understand at all. What is the risk of such behavior to the status of the empire, his image in the eyes of the people and that girl? He doesn't think that even if a person's face is so pretty, it's the people who will be willing to throw under his feet to please him. But the emperor said that apparently he had nothing more to say. The boy was outraged. He didn't know what it meant. He didn't usually act like this. Then he calmed himself a little and turned to his majesty, asking if he could inquire why he was going to the hospital room, Herhan asked. And isn't it already clear he wants to talk to her personally? And except for a visit, I personally otherwise he can't do it. 
He then asked that those not follow him unless they wanted to show anyone that the emperor had left the palace. As the emperor walked out the door, he heard someone talking. Someone said that maybe they'd get away with it if they didn't look in her direction, because sometimes it was scary to look. It was the maids. The other agreed with her and said that was right. Didn't she look like a madwoman? She'd been staring at the wall all morning and nothing more. The other girl said she heard that the one went mad and became mute just from the news that she was going to be hanged. The other girl said that since she was already awake, we could discuss a plan for her excoriation. At this moment, the Harhan thought that this place clearly did not belong to the royal family, but to a tangle of snakes that only valued gossip. The maid said she wanted to be cleaned up as soon as possible anyway. Very annoying girl. At this point, Harhan walked into Riel's room and said that some people were saying that she had become mute. He looked the girl in the eyes and replied that she understood the agony she was going through. But you can't keep on keeping silent in front of the world. Riella didn't answer anything to that. She just sat there looking at the man with a blank stare. Then the guy decided to get closer to her. After that, he took her chin and started to approach her lips. Afterward, he ran his finger over her lips and said it was very dirty. After that, the man returned to his office. Aishin, who was standing next to him, thought about what he should have told him that it was time to plan joint affairs with the kingdom. Hirhan just sat there staring at nothing, saying nothing, for some time now. Then his second assistant turned to Asian and asked if something had happened at the meeting with the convict. The boy replied that he did not know, because he had been in such a state the whole time he came back. But then suddenly, their whispering was interrupted by Hirkin's voice, which was spoken by the master of ceremonies. Asian was surprised and asked what he was saying. The emperor said to arrange a meeting with the head of the kingdom in the evening, and that they should attend without fail. His aide said he would inform them right away. The guy also said that the king would probably be very pleased. They had already made all the preparations, so all that's left for Hirhan to do is to arrive on time. But the emperor said no. They would organize everything themselves. Let him order them to prepare a meal from the food they had brought from the empire. Since they are indebted to the royal family, they should be thanked properly, saying that, Hirhan smiled. Then his aide bowed and said, well, he would clarify everything about that. Then the emperor turned to Asian. When the aide came out, the emperor turned and asked if he remembered how they had taken prisoners in Hanistha seven years ago. Asian said that of course he remembered it, and asked if he meant those who had taken the poison of Clady and died, in order not to reveal their secrets. But then he asked why he was asking, and then he guessed. Herhan said it was right, and asked if the symptoms weren't too similar to Riel's. When evening came, the emperor met with the king after all. The man asked how he could thank Herhan for such an honor. After all, the emperor himself gave them this reception. He will be the first king to be honored by the emperor. Herhan smiled and said that if he was so delayed, he had just decided to have a little celebration. He was very glad he was enjoying himself. The king replied that of course they were just delighted, and Greta, his daughter, sat there thinking not knowing what it all meant. They were carried off the first day, not all the banquets and receptions they prepared were cancelled, and now they're treating her to their own dinner. She doesn't understand how her father can pretend to like it so much. Then the king asked him if everything was satisfactory in his chambers. He replied that of course the castle was beautiful, and thanks to his care, his rest is very comfortable. The man replied that he was very pleased to hear that, and Greta didn't understand why he pretended not to be interested in anything, even though he himself was making an investigation right in the hospital room. Then the girl thought, what if he just gave up? Maybe Riella is sitting with a mouthful of water, so he might as well have given up. Greta thought it was the most logical of all possible explanations, but then she saw Hirhan looking suspiciously into her eyes. The girl even choked on her wine because of this. Then the emperor said that she, the princess seemed too tense. Then he called a waiter named Bill and asked him to bring the princess a cup of tea. But the girl said she shouldn't do that. But after a while a cup of tea was on the table, and Hirhan told her to drink it, for tea was excellent for calming the nerves. Greta thought it looked very suspicious, but she thanked him and drank some still. When the tea entered her system, the girl felt some kind of miraculous effect, and she glowed. The father looked at his daughter and said that the tea was really good. Then Hirhan asked the king if he would like to taste it too. The man replied that he would love to. How could one not taste tea from the emperor himself? Taking a sprig of the plant, 
Hirhan said they harvest it from plantations in the southern islands, so technically it's not his tea. When he said that they must have heard of a poisonous plant called Cladi. When Greta heard this, she covered her mouth with her hands and wanted to run out of the room. Her father picked her up and asked what she was doing. The emperor said that it seems that it was not only the fact of the poisonous plant that frightened the princess. If the dosage of intake is controlled, the extract of the plant has a sedative and relaxing effect. But the poison itself takes effect when there is too much of it. Saying this, the emperor squeezed the juice out of the berry. The king sat back in his seat and said that was a very interesting explanation. Then he asked, What if there really is poison in there? But Hirhan laughed and said that tea does no harm, only cures. The poison already parasitizes the tongue and throat, causing one to lose the ability to speak and think straight. The king, hearing this, praised his highness, saying that he was so clever. But the emperor answered yes, but he was only well versed in poison and poisonous plants. Then he asked if the condemned woman was awake, and he thought that of course he knew everything already. And he thought that Greta should not even think of deceiving him again, for he knew everything. But then suddenly the king spoke. He said he didn't understand what responsibility they had for the mistakes they had made if there was a way they could atone to his majesty. Herhan immediately interrupted him and said that meant the conversation she would not last long. He wanted to end it all as soon as possible. Hello, Shiragi of the two states is here. He asked if there was no sense of additional conditions. Then the king asked if that meant he wanted to execute that girl right now. But the emperor said that no, he wanted to take full responsibility for Riel Blinith's life. From now on, she would be under the patronage of the, of their empire. So he asks that the king not pay too much attention to her. The man was very surprised to hear this. But Hirhan interrupted him and turned to the princess, asking if she had any objections. Greta thought, what on earth is this girl even doing not enough that the kingdom of the humiliated simpleton and that she should have died long ago? At that moment, she remembered talking to Fabian. He had asked if Riella was sure she was going to be okay. The girl had asked how much longer, saying to her, Is she going to be okay? The man said he knew everything was well prepared, but he was still worried. Greta touched his face and told him not to worry. She whispered in his ear that she swore she wouldn't kill the girl. Greta thought it was a shame, though. It was unfortunate that the game was lost the moment she was revealed by the Emperor. However, the girl decided that the day of her vengeance would come soon after all, and everyone would pay the price. Greta therefore replied to the Emperor that she had no objection. The next day, the Emperor called for the doctor and the guards. The doctor, after reading the report, said that the poison had entered her body in prison, and she had taken a great risk. He then explained that with the help of their medicine, they had barely managed to get the poison out of her system. The maid stood near the door and whispered. One of them asked, Isn't that the accused? The other didn't understand why this Krishna was still in the castle. Where does the emperor reside? Asian said it was his fault. After all, no outsider could get into the palace, but still, I somehow got to the girl. Herkin replied that it doesn't matter anymore, because in any case I penetrate the human body very discreetly. Maybe the intruder had no idea they would have noticed it, so used the poison of the cladi instead of any other to cover everything up. Asian said that even with long use of cladi, a person could die, and along with the victim, all the sins of the abuser would go to the grave. The emperor pondered his words. Herhan decided that the meeting in Ladare last fall had been a chance encounter. However, if he was even a couple seconds late, the girl would die and let everyone around him have changed over the year. But this girl has stayed the same. She is constantly in a difficult situation and constantly regretful, and also constantly experiencing difficulties. At this moment, the emperor removed the hair from her face. And after that, he turned to his assistant, Carnell, and told him to take good care of her. No matter how long it takes, it's not a good idea to turn to strong medication because it will affect her health. The deputy said he'll do it. Then the emperor went out the door, and Asian followed him and called out apologizing for his frank question. The guy asked if something had happened between him and Riella Blanita that he didn't know about. Because there's a reason why they're so protective of the ex-convict. The royal family behaved like the last idiots, and now they have a reason to bring everything to justice. But it's strange enough for him when his majesty says something like, do whatever it takes to save this girl. Hirhan was indignant and said that he had never said such a thing. Then Ashen replied that the essence was similar, and that was the most important thing. At this moment, 
The emperor thought that all was right. He wasn't a fool. Never a guy even thought that he would keep secrets from Aishin. Then he turned to him and told him what was more important. But at that moment the guy interrupted him and told him not to change the subject. He wouldn't fall for that. Herhan said he's been having a lot of headaches lately, and he's been having hallucinations as well. Asian was surprised and asked, and how long the medicine might be? He's not taking those. And does he take medication anyway? The emperor thought that would be better. After that he smiled and replied that he would go. Asian became indignant and asked who was walking away from the conversation like that. The whole time Riella was out, she had different memories, some even from when she was just a little girl. Of course, in those pictures was Fabian, who was dearer to her than anything else in the world. It was a major blow to her when Fabian traded her for the princess. After that, a memory surfaced in front of the girl as she stood in the square with Hecarin above her. The girl prayed for help. She wanted him to save her. The girl thought that she hadn't done anything wrong after all, and with these thoughts she opened her eyes. When the doctor noticed this, he was glad that she was finally awake. Then he said she should rest, for her body had not yet fully recovered from the effects of the poison. Riella jumped up from the bed in terror. She grabbed the doctor by the shirt and shouted something, but the man didn't understand what she was saying. So he called his assistants and told them to just tie her to the bed. He said she'd be violent when she woke up, but Riella didn't listen to them. She crawled quickly to the small table on which the pieces of paper lay. One of the guards tried to stop her, asking what she was doing and telling her she needed to get back to bed right away. But at that moment the emperor came to them at the noise and asked what it was that they had going on. One of the guards approached him and said that apparently the sinner had written something, holding out a piece of paper to him. The one I took from the girl earlier. It said the girl was asking to be rescued. Hirhan was very surprised by this. He didn't understand why exactly he had. He knows the girl was framed, but that doesn't mean she's completely innocent. He came closer to her and said that whether she did what was illegal or not, she was an accessory, and that fact remains unchanged. But the emperor doesn't understand why on earth he should help her. After that, he thought he simply had no choice and took the girl in his arms. In that moment, Riella thought that if she couldn't get a hold of the man who was supposed to execute her, there might not be another chance. When he heard that the girl wasn't answering anything, he said he would try to change the question, and asked if he would help her. Would she really run this time too? A haughty look appeared before the girl and stared into her. She couldn't believe that he seemed to be reprimanding her for recognizing him too late. Then the emperor smiled and said that she seemed to recognize him now. He had already helped her several times and asked if she would pay him now, but the girl answered nothing. Then he said he would wait until the answer came from her lips and then he asked Bill and Carnell to do what they could to get her back on her feet in a day. Before leaving, he said that as emperor, he would not tolerate any shortcomings in the care of Riella Blinite. A few days later, the palace was filled with rumors that no one could believe. Everyone said that he had fallen in love with a girl. One day the maid stood outside and whispered, asking, What if it's true? Is she the reason why the emperor ignores all royal activities and lives in another palace? The palace seems to have gone mad. The kingdom and the empire are all eager to please her. One of the maids said that it was indeed a secret, as Bree from the western castle had said that the imperial retinue had come the other day. He asked them to pick out the women's robes and left the finest silks as fabric. The girl said she couldn't believe it herself, and also the fact that all those clothes were needed by this girl. Then the maid asked the princess if they could come back, but Greta replied that no, how dare she be in the holy royal palace even when her guts were almost covered in moss from the inside out. Sitting in his office and signing various papers, Hirkin said that rumors are spreading at an alarming rate. Some talk of the greatest love of the century. Asian wondered if it might be all the chara of the femme fatale who had captured the emperor's attention. They say that kind of thing is much more popular lately. Hirhan smirked and said that he noticed him starting to sarcasm him, but his assistant got angry and asked why he was laughing. Is he really amused by this situation? But the emperor was surprised and said, Isn't that funny? He is in great fun political dramas are quite to his taste. Asian was even more infuriated by this. He asked if he was joking, but Hirhan laughed and said that this situation was basically impossible to take seriously. But his assistant asked him why he suddenly wanted to be serious, like all grown-ups. He obviously had something going on with Riel Blinite, and that's why he's so protective of her. Aeseon was persistent and asked if that was true, 
but the emperor chuckled and said he didn't know. At this point, the guy thought that if he couldn't get answers from this side, he would personally ask the girl then. He'll really go to her in person and ask her everything. But when did it happen? Riella said that she had heard that the emperor came to the throne last winter and asked if it was true. Asian was very angry about it, but he couldn't answer her. The girl asked him what had happened when he came to the throne. Asian replied that he couldn't explain it all. But what he was curious about was what had happened between her and... But the guy didn't have time to finish, because Riella interrupted him, and said that it meant that his majesty knew that the royal family of Liotta was to blame for everything. Then she asked what would then happen between the Elschweig Empire and the Liotta Kingdom. Would it be war? The man didn't know what to say. But Riella continued. She said that if his majesty was originally a royal prince, why wasn't he present in the imperial palace? And then Aishin couldn't take it anymore. He told her to stop for a second and asked her how she had brought him to this conversation in the first place. Afterwards, he realized how he'd fallen for the girl and apologized for having a big temper. It's just so complicated that she doesn't realize it herself. It was difficult for him because on one side, namely the imperial power, was just a stone wall, and on the other side was just softness. The next morning the doctor came to see Riel. He asked her to try to speak, and the girl repeated after him. Then he did an examination and said that her voice was almost recovered. She could increase her activity, walk a bit and so on. The man said that even though she was still being supervised, she was allowed to walk down the hall to her chambers, of course. After that, he told the girl to rest for a while and he would be on his way. But Riella stopped him. She wanted to say something to him, and thought to herself that it was surprising enough that she had been given a bedroom in the royal palace, rather than a dungeon in a prison. And all the clothes and food and care for her health, you don't even have to go out to know how she'll be looked at. Not only was the girl scared by this situation, but everyone around her also didn't understand what was going on at all, and Riel herself wondered about it. Day in and day out, that guy is incomprehensible. Yes, His Majesty's actions confuse her as well. The girl, getting out of bed, thought she only wished she could ask where he was now. The doctor had already left by then, when Riella pulled herself together and stepped out into the hallway, which was empty because it was already evening. So as she walked around a bit, she saw an open door. When she looked inside, she saw what she was looking for. At a large desk, Hirhan sat studying papers with Asian standing beside him. The emperor felt eyes on him. Then he took a sideways glance at the girl. At that moment she thought about whether she should say hello, or whether it would be too much. She didn't know if it would be too much of what she wanted to know. But how to ask about them, she didn't know. Riella thought maybe she should just pretend she didn't know anything and not stand out. But then suddenly she heard his voice telling her to sit down. She was surprised. For a while she just stood in the doorway, gathering her thoughts. And so, having finally gathered her courage, the girl approached the table and was about to sit down at the table when suddenly the emperor spoke and asked, Does that mean her voice has already recovered? He then looked directly at Riella and told her to sit closer to him. The girl had no choice, so she walked over and sat on the chair that was right next to the emperor. She thought at that moment that here she was, sitting closer, just as he had asked, but she didn't know what she should do now. After a few minutes of silence, Hirhan asked if she had anything to say. The girl was surprised and wondered if she should be the first to speak. Then she asked what exactly he wanted. The emperor was surprised and asked what she meant. Riella looked a little embarrassed, but then said that if he had something he wanted, she would try to find it. The girl then went on and said that he told her he would wait to hear back from her, but she didn't know exactly how to repay him and apologized for that. Now Hirhan remembered what he was talking about. He had already forgotten about those words. It was surprising to him that she had been so caught up in that request. The girl apologized again and said that his entire middle name already owned the world, and she didn't know if there was anything else he wanted. The emperor continued to remain silent. Then Riella asked him if she could offer him proof. The man set aside his papers and asked, What more proof? Riella said proof that the royal family was plotting an assassination attempt on him, and asked if that's why he kept her there. The emperor asked, Does she really think she is only an object of proof that she can catch a criminal? Afterward he thought she was right. Of course, he kept her here partly for political reasons. Then Hirhan got a little angry and said that she was used to treating herself as an object, but proving him right was already enough. The boy didn't understand why he was so uncomfortable with the situation. The girl replied that she only wanted to help the emperor in any way she could. 
Then he asked in a rough voice if he had asked her for help. Riella became frustrated and thought that she wasn't even worthy of being a political tool for this man, no matter how much she clung to the man. It's not working out for her, apparently. The girl's nightmare would never end. Then she bowed and apologized for her words. The emperor just stared at her in silence, and the girl continued and said that she had no idea that he was a member of the imperial family. All she wanted to say was that she was really guilty in front of him. Hirhan thought about getting her to stop saying it, let her stop talking, but he just got up from his seat, pushing back his chair, and quickly left the room without saying anything. Riella endured humiliation as well as insult and abuse. What did she go through before she came to his palace? What broke the girl so much that she is now afraid to even say a word, afraid to make a mistake? After a while, Aishan came into her Hanu's room and said that he had escorted Riel Blinneth to her chambers. When the emperor didn't say anything back to him, the guy walked closer to him and asked if he was all right. Hirhan said that his hand was hurting him a lot. Aishan said he didn't want to do that, but the emperor replied that he was asking nicely. The aide then went over and started massaging his hand, asking if it was so bad, and after that, what happened? What was it that upset him so much? He knew for a fact that there was something between them. Asian then said that he probably shouldn't say such a thing. But he asked why he hadn't read what Riella Blanita had on her mind. The emperor sighed heavily and said that he didn't know what was in her heart. Then his aide said that now he understood why he was so rude. Then Asian said that apparently there were some people his powers didn't work on after all. Herkin said, removing his hand from his face, that there must be. He may have been born with a special gift. It's impossible to be able to read everyone's soul. But the emperor thought that was not the case. Is her soul so dark and confusing? When Riella returned to her room, she immediately lay down on her bed and began to think about the situation. The girl wondered what else she could expect. The Fabians, the guys who valued her so much, left her very easily. And how could this guy be any different from them? What could she possibly be surprised about? the emperor of Elschweig with a heart of ice. Would he ask a mere sinner for help? But the girl doesn't understand why he hasn't chased her away yet, if he's so unwilling to deal with her. After lying down a little longer, Riella got out of bed as night fell and walked out into the hallway, thinking that, though no matter how cruel he was, there was mercy shown to her on his part, so she is obligated to help him even if he doesn't want to. But then suddenly, when the girl was about to go through the door, she was stopped by the guards and told not to move because this was His Majesty's territory. Riella didn't expect this. She said that she urgently needed to speak to His Majesty. But the girl didn't even have time to finish the last sentence before Aishan came out of the room and told the guards to disperse. After that he turned to the girl and told her to come on in. He is in his office. Riella was surprised, but she bowed and thanked him. And the guard asked the general why he was doing this. Aishan told him not to interfere where he was not asked. After that, the girl walked down the corridor to the door. She stopped at the entrance and told His Majesty that she needed to speak to him, but there was still no answer. Riella didn't know what to do. She thought that he would probably tell her that she couldn't come in right away. The girl stood for a moment longer, and then asked again if she could come in. There was no answer. Riel suspected something wrong. Then she apologized and said she was going in. When the door opened, she saw Herhan lying unconscious on the floor. The girl immediately ran up to him and shouted, asking if everything was all right. When she realized that he wouldn't answer her, she shouted that his majesty was unconscious. Then suddenly Riella realized that the room was too far away and no one would hear her. But then suddenly she felt a strong pain in her throat. The girl didn't understand what it had to do with, but she knew she needed to get out and call urgently for help. And just as she was about to run out of the room, she heard Hirhan cough. She turned to him at once and asked him if he could hear her. The emperor just coughed in response. Then the girl told him not to worry, for she would call someone right away.